Say say ya, uno chino yo me. What is up, everyone? It's Panda here, and I'm here to talk to you guys about Saint Seiya Legend of Sanctuary, a brand new movie that came out, which is retelling an old shonen series that I actually recently watched recently, that I have a little special place in my heart. I really do enjoy the original Saint Seiya anime, and to see that they actually did a reboot. That's what people need to know. This is actually a reboot, more modernized version of the first arc of the series known as the Sanctuary arc. It's a movie version telling you that, and one thing you probably already know as well, that this isn't actually like the original anime. This is actually a CG movie of sorts, which is actually very surprising since I already had a lot of doubts at the start that this was actually going to look good as a CGI. I really wanted to stick to like original animation and stuff, but honestly, this is one of the best things about the film. The movie looks incredible. It is probably some of the best CGI that I've actually seen Toei ever do. This stuff looks absolutely incredible. It looks gorgeous. You can see that they put a lot of time and effort making the, everything look fluid. The characters, their movements, the, like, the attacks. There's just so much color. And I think this will be a nice treat to your eyes. The people who highly doubt what CGI movies could actually work for anime and all that, then there you go. This is a great chance to see it because this is a spectacle to watch. It looks beautiful. And it's probably one of my actual favorite to actually look like movies like this is absolutely looking incredible. The story tells about Sayori Kido who is actually Athena and even as a little baby she got attacked by the evil corrupt brand Pope of Sanctuary and they actually tried to attack her and it was only up to one goal Saint Iolius that actually tried to save her and it was actually 16 years later when she grows up when she actually gets told by her butler talk to me that she actually is the incarnate of Athena and then suddenly she is attacked by the Pope's assassins and actually is saved by four strong knights and finds out that she they are actually her saviors and her guardians known as the saints and she has five of these guardians but we'll get to the next one eventually it's basically a tale of like getting into the sanctuary and stopping the evil pope and one thing that people need to know as well like i said it is a reboot this is a more modernized version of say say people are thinking that this is going to be a straight faithful retelling of the series there have been a lot of changes and there's been a lot more differences and all that firstly the fact that you know the characters some of them look pretty much more than usual but the one thing that must be said is that they actually have more modernized armor they actually look like knights in this one like they actually have this cool helmet sort of transformation like the armor glows and it's like honestly i like these new designs i think they look really good they look modernized they look awesome they look very fantasy like and just beautiful honestly and that's one thing that you can't take away that the more modernized versions of the saints look very very good and it honestly completely trumps out the original anime's animation which was very bland compared to like right now at this age another thing is what to say as well that this is a hour and a half movie so you're gonna expect this movie to go for like pretty fast with the content this is a very big arc in the same series series so there's obviously going to be some cuts and some corners. There's going to be some stuff where you're going to be like, wow, that felt a little bit fast paced. But Saint Seiya is just pretty much a pure action series and all that. Yeah, it has a little bit of the story, but most of the time the arc and sort of like the story is pretty much the same around it. You know, got to go here. We've got to protect the girl. Let's go here. And like, it's all about pretty much manly men beating the shit out of each other and just going in. Honestly, some of the best moments in this uh, movie is pretty much Seiya going against Aldebaran. That was an absolutely sick fight. Iolia site. Like, there are a lot of great stuff in this state, and I really do like that they show real, like, awesome scenes that I love from the original anime, and it's like, damn, I wish that was, like, looking a little bit more better, and Saint Seiya does that for you. One thing that I was really disappointed about is that there is one fight that they skip in this movie, which I was a kind of a little bit disappointed about, but it kind of made sense. I mean, if they had an extra 10, 15 minutes, maybe they could have squeezed it in and all that into the movie, but that's, like, the only nitpick I really had with the fights throughout the series. Like, that, they kind of did that. And also as well, it's a lot more of the cinematic version than the original anime. So the actual ending of the series is a lot more cinematic, a lot kind of different from the actual original series. Mainly due to budgeting reasons, I'm guessing, for the original anime. And kind of as well, like it looks more impactful than how the original anime ended. So the ending's more cinematic and I think a lot of people who are diehard faithful wanted this to be a pure faithful series. And I can see a lot of people hate about this movie for trying to do a lot of changes and a lot of modernized stuff to it. Honestly, I think it's a very nice breath of fresh air for this series. I think it's needed that for a very long while. 
I mean, it's a very good change of pace, I feel, for that. I really do like it. I mean, yes, like, one thing that did annoy me as well in this movie, which I can't let go, is that personalities of, like, the Saints and all that aren't really explored too much. The one that probably gets more, most explored in this uh, movie is Saya himself, and that was honestly just a little flashback at the start of the series. I mean, the one that has probably the most exploration about her past is honestly Athena. I'm a little bit disappointed about that. They could have done that, but it's like, like I said, it's a movie that's only an hour half long run, and if they're not to mention is that it's a very old shonen series so it's not going to be very much strategic fights and all that you're not expecting like huge strategy is pretty much who can burn their cosmos the most and all that so people who are expecting like very strategical very clever fights and all that don't because you're just going to see men punching each other going in using their special techniques the ryu senkens and just going straight in and honestly like i was honestly surprised that they even cut out a few characters from the story as well there's some that they actually left out because it is a small little introductory act but for, like sanctuary but it's like honestly like some of these characters did not need to be in the movie at all there are some that i feel like that should have been in there particularly the two female saints in in particular that should have been in there but maybe they might be a little bit more explored in the next movie if they ever do plan to watch that's another thing as well it does end in such a way where it does have the potential to have another movie and all that i mean side and arc is a very short arc in the series so they could honestly do that but if they're honestly going to do another one then i feel like after that if they're going to do explore it to the hades right which is the final arc of the series then this is going to need a lot more than just one movie i can honestly see with the sanctuary arc people complaining about it being very rushed but if they did hades arc in like one movie then i have no like faith in it at all because the Hades arc is very long, even if it was only made into an OVA format. So I feel a lot like needed. it's needed to maybe even three movies out that you could push it out. Honestly, like I gotta say, I love the new Sayers personality, even as well as Sayori. Sayori seems like more like a kinder and faithful version. And she feels like this is how Athena should have been. In the original anime, she was a very more stuck up, like kind of like posh brat. And I really didn't personally like that. That's my own personal opinion on that. And even as well, Sayer as well, he's not as bland as sort of the old series. Is like he's got like a more jokey personality he's a lot smaller like you get to see like a lot of kind of crazy little gimmicks and kind of little jokes with him and i kind of like that that the more saints and all that they're not all just like oh we must protect you know the girl and all that they can joke around they're friends and all that and even especially as well it shows just cool moments between them especially with one of them Iki. How I wish Iki had more screen time in this movie. I know that was something I was screaming for pretty much throughout the movie. I was like, where is Iki? I need to see him. And he gets some really badass moments throughout the movie. But it's like, he could have been explored a little bit more. And it's just like, just honestly, I had a lot of fun with this movie. And I was very shocked to hear that a lot of people really didn't like this movie. Like, I seen like a couple people talking about it and it was like they said it was terrible and i was like not, let me get this straight this is not a terrible movie could they have done some things better yes they could have should they have like cut, not cut some characters out yes there should have been an extra fight yes there should have been a, a, like, quite a few things in this movie actually that they should have done and all that but regardless of what for an hour and a half movie i would always show them that wasn't you know it wasn't very strategic it's like kind of the old-fashioned version of a series known as fairy tale which kind of has the same way of fighting and all that as well so it's pretty much hit the guy harder that's sort of the strategy of it but shonen has that nice little feeling you have, like you i love watching old shows and that's one thing about it like i love seeing the saints getting a more revamped version of like and just a nice reboot telling of like the old series because i love the sanctuary arc and honestly yeah uh, it would have been nice to see a little exploration of more of the characters and all that i think they honestly did a great job with like the time and constrictions that they had and honestly i think this movie could have gone a lot worse uh, than it originally had and honestly i think if you really want to watch saint sayer i would honestly recommend you watch the movie first and then i'd say go back to the original anime and watch you know the first couple of episodes and see you know the, the perspective and all that what you personally think personally i'd say i'm going to recommend to a new saint sayer fan i'd honestly recommend them the movie i'd honestly recommend them this movie right now i think it's honestly very good and it's like want to go into more see more saints there if they don't really want to see that much then i'd probably recommend them to just go watching the last couple episodes of the poseidon arc you know it's an old animation thing and then go into the Hades OVAs and then, you know, go into Saint Sayer Lost Canvas. Just, like, continue on from there because I honestly think this was a really 
really, really good attempt at a movie. I thought, you know, this has such potential as well to make into like huge movie series that they could do. They could honestly make about like, you know, four movies out of this. They could honestly make like three or four movies, like have one movie for the next like arc that they got to do and then do two or three, you know, for the one after that. Honestly, like I said, I don't see why people are complaining about this and I honestly really enjoyed this movie. Personal opinion, I am going to give this one a wholeheartedly eight out of 10. Yes, did they have problems? Yes, there was one character that was had a gender swap. I was a bit shocked about that but guys of what they really had fun with this movie it brought back a childhood sort of like I mean, it, and i saw this series only this year and this is something that i feel like i would have loved in my childhood if i saw this movie as a kid something like that or if i do, just want to see just cool ass characters fighting against cool bad guys and stuff like that cool like helpful like oh they're like you know they can't triumph for it then i feel this would be a great opportunity you know to watch saint say i honestly think and i highly highly suggest this that if you haven't seen this and you've gone through and listened through the entirety of this review i would honestly wholeheartedly recommend that you watch this movie and i would really like to hear your opinion on that and also people who, who have seen the movie already let me know in the comment section down below what did you think of legend of sanctuary like did you like it are you like some people did you hate it like are you stand off on this honestly said thanks there i love the series and i think this movie did a very good attempt doing this movie but that's all for me so thank you very much for watching as always and I'll see you guys next time, and remember, Ryu Sanken!